and gentlemen, welcome to the studio this evening where I'm going to be painting this beautiful little kingfisher that you see uh, in the lower right hand corner. Tonight I'm using my M. Graham Studio palette of paints and I'm getting started on this guy with just a bit of basic black on his beak. Oh, maybe that was a little too much. Let me take a little bit off of there. I just want to get a little bit of color, maybe start to put a little bit of dimension on it uh, but basically just getting a little bit of color in there something to get it started and then we're going to go on from there the brushes that i'm using this evening are my silver black velvet brushes uh, they're quite nice brushes i, I like them uh, quite a bit and I'm working together a little bit of an, uh, an orangey-red color for his chest and around his eyes and whatnot. It's a little bit of pyrrole red, maybe a little bit of uh, yellow in there. Uh, but just mixing up a nice uh, bit of an orangey-red color. And I'll take that all the way down to his feet. There we go. I'm using a fairly small brush. This is a size 4. When I... <clears throat> switch over to, to working on his back I'll switch over to a slightly larger brush and uh, we'll be able to cover a little bit more area in a little shorter amount of time uh, and here you go just up around his cheek above his beak there uh, just dropping in just blotting in some basic areas where I think this color needs to go using that reference photo as just a guide not a firm, hard uh, thing that I have to pay attention to. And then uh, I want some color here for blue. And I think for this guy, turquoise is going to be a fantastic color. So I'm just going to drop in some of this straight turquoise, nothing else, just mixed really lightly. And I'm just trying to get a base color down. Uh, now I should say the paper that I'm using for this uh, painting is Strathmore paper. It is cellulose based. It did come out of a spiral bound notebook. Uh, so you can paint some really nice paintings with some cellulose paper if you uh, so choose. Not everybody needs to use Arches paper or you know, Fabriano or Cuthbert Mill, something, you know, uh, much more expensive okay so I'm mixing up just a little bit well I'm trying to see what I'm mixing up a little bit of a warm light brown there's a little bit of maybe just a touch of sepia in there and some yellow ochre and now I'm coming back to my blue color I'm gonna see if I can go right around the top of his head just kind of going around his eye, around the areas I painted before. Now I try a new thing in this video and it gives a dramatic effect. I'm not so sure I like it as much as uh, I, I just like getting out and painting. And you'll see it come up later. It is uh, outlining all of the areas with a bit of black or dark anyways. And you can do that and it really makes the different areas stand out quite a bit. Uh, but you'll see that come up. And here I'm just uh, just putting in some feathers. The, the color that I'm using here to define these is just a little bit of Payne's Gray. And I'm going to blend that way down to nothing. <clears throat> just some Payne's Gray on top of that turquoise that I put on and it just it, it it gives a really dramatic look as though those feathers are very far apart and I'll do a little bit more down here and then I'm gonna do a little bit of blending there we go blend that down blend that down and you can see just by quickly doing this it, all of a sudden now uh, this bird has feathers in at least three layers right there, right? At least three layers. Maybe there's a little blue mixed in with the, a little turquoise mixed in with that Payne's Gray up here. 
coming back up to his beak again this is just black on his beak nothing else just want to make sure that uh, I get the right look on it and again we'll come back to that uh, later on you'll see but the bottom of it is mostly dark black and so we can just put that on and I'm just futzing with it at the moment <laughs> a little bit on the top soften it up and right along the top if you put if you put a, a top shadow on along with the bottom shadow then you really get something that looks three-dimensional okay now I'm gonna do his eye just a little bit here sometimes I like to wait and paint eyes last I apologize for turning the painting all the way around um, as I was saying I like to paint the eyes last sometimes but oftentimes um, the eye really brings out the the focus or the attitude of the animal and so there are times when I do like to paint the eye a little bit sooner I'm darkening up those red spots here I'm not adding any real detail you see there's no real detail on anything yet even the feathers along the side of his body there's not any real detail it's just an outline of them no need to add detail quite yet I just want to gain the general shape of this bird get the general dimensions of him on there and let the bird kind of uh, come to life on his own and then and then we'll come back and we'll add some fine details later but just dropping in the colors where I think it ought to be is what I'm doing here and and I'm letting the reference photo be the guide but I don't feel the need to be a slave to that I've talked about it before on my videos I don't try to replicate the photo if I wanted to replicate the photo, I would take a photocopy of it. I just let that photo act as a guide for what I'm doing. And then it allows me to be a little bit more free to interpret it how I see fit. <clears throat> okay, so we have the basic shape. Everything's here on this bird. And now we can start to come in and add a few more details tighten up those colors where they need to be and I really start to give him a bit more life so this is again just turquoise on here just bringing the color value up making it brighter and darker and in here uh, there's a little bit of Payne's gray in there Payne's gray is nice because it doesn't uh, it doesn't overpower any color uh, and it's pretty neutral so it's just going to sit there and just dull it down and, and push it into the background a little bit <clears throat> and brighten this tail up that first layer we did was just to get color on here I don't want to put on heavy heavy layers I'd rather go back and do two or three layers rather than put heavy color on in one layer the reason for that is that you can alter the layers a little bit here and there you can add a little bit of detail in each layer if you do it lightly if you put on one heavy layer then you are stuck with what you've got and it makes it hard if you go back uh, to put any more paint on over top it makes it very difficult to glaze or layer your paints if you're putting on a heavier layer I apologize if you hear some noise in the background <laughs> we haven't had any rain where I'm where I live in California for I don't know three four five months maybe more than that and all of a sudden it has decided to rain and it's quite windy and uh, some of the things in the yard are not quite nailed down so if you hear some noise in the background it's uh, bits of something being blown around my yard and I apologize for that okay and we're putting we're adding more color onto the bird we're intensifying the colors that are there 
as I come down, these layers are nice and light. If I want to add a feather that sticks out to the side on his back here, I can do that. If I don't want to do that, I don't have to do that. But by adding these nice light layers, I can easily do that. And then when I go over it, you'll see that it, it looks as though it's a feather on the back side of him sticking out. I'm just trying to define a few of the feathers here on the inside though. And with this paper, this is, as I said, Strathmore paper. It's cellulose based, it's a wood pulp paper. Uh, it takes a little different handling to paint on this than it does if you would paint on uh, all cotton paper. So I can't quite get this as wet and I have to allow each section to dry fully uh, before I can do anything with it. Now this guy's got some lines on the top of his head and some uh, gnarled marks up there or something like that. I'm just really just dropping and dragging the end of my brush on his head to try to generate some random marks. It's not going to look exactly like his head is and that's okay but it's going to look similar and that's what we're going for. And then just right on around his head and you see I'm jumping around this bird constantly going from his back to his tail to his head to his beak and all over and I'm doing that to allow individual sections to dry <clears throat> so that when I go back and touch them the paint just doesn't all run together on on cellulose paper it's very important that you let each section dry or you will have a lot of trouble it, everything will just kind of run together and you'll get a kind of mud and that's not going to be fun for anybody so here I've got a dark color and I'm just going to start to define a few feathers in here. This is a this is a rigger brush. Uh, it's a it's a zero rigger. This one actually is from Zen Art Supply. It's a quite nice rigger. Uh, comfortable to hold and uh, the bristles are quite springy, so it's nice and easy to paint straight lines with it. And I'm drawing lines from top and bottom of where these feathers are, just to give the indication of, of a lot of feathers there. Yep, just testing. See, I'm just testing to see what's dry and what's not. Can I get into paint on it? Maybe, maybe not. There we go. Adding another layer. Adding that layer means I just added another feather onto this guy and drop a little Payne's Gray in there and all of a sudden now it looks like it's standing apart. They look they look like they're two different levels when it's just the turquoise but as soon as you add that tiny bit of Payne's Gray in there wow it, they really separate. Okay re-darkening his eye. The black that I'm using is not M. Graham black uh, the rest of the colors on my palette are M. Graham. This black is Windsor & Newton black. It's quite a warm black. Uh, and, uh, and I rather like it. I originally got it at a garage sale or an estate sale. And uh, I put it on my palette as a lark just to see what it would do. And kind of, kind of decided I liked it. So I've kept it on my palette. In fact, I've ordered an extra tube of it so I don't run out of it. Uh, the tail is looking good down there. And you can see parts of this bird really have come to life. And we've got a long way to go in some of the other parts of this guy. Down on his chin here, I guess what you would call his chin. I'm doing the same thing that I did on his head. He's just got some spots down there. I want to make sure those are put on there. <clears throat> and now that, now that it's dry enough on that wing, I can put some paint on. 
and I'll probably add a little dark layer on there too to separate those feathers and I'm coming down his back just to blend that out as best I can there we go there's a little bit of dark and all of a sudden those feathers on his back are just gonna separate instant layer of feathers on his back and blend 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 and those out there we go he's got a little hole in his back we need to fill in but we've got some other stuff to get to all right now here's where I said this is one technique that really adds some dramatic interest and I'm gonna go around all of these colors up here not with a not necessarily with a heavy line but a little line I've just turned it to make it a little easier for me and I hope you can forgive me for that but adding some darks here and there he's got a few dark feathers up here so it's okay and some little tiny brush lines right along the edges uh, where the colors meet Maybe even a few inside of where the colors are and it's gonna add a lot of drama I hope you can see that and again this is this is not anything that's uh, rocket surgery surgery or anything this is just it's black putting it on very lightly very small brush strokes I don't want to overwhelm the painting, uh, but I do want to just get these details in there. And you can see the reference photo. If you look at it, there's no black on the back of his head or very little of it. But as soon as we put that line on there, all of a sudden his head has a lot of interest to it. And I'm just going to drop a little bit here and there. And underneath right all just around these colored areas this is something anybody could do and as I said it adds a super amount of interest to whatever project it is that you're working on it does take a little practice to master this technique uh, but probably not as much as the rest of the painting takes so feel free to give this a try uh, if you want to add a little spice to some of your paintings. He's got a few. He's got a few dark lines up here. We'll just put a few of these on. Right, uh, the darks in here. These are just going to look as though uh, the shadow, maybe. Right, maybe he's got a few feathers standing up on the top of his head that we don't necessarily see, but uh, in the reference photo, but that you see in the painting or your eyes would normally pick up. There we go, and and just like that, now you can see. Now his head looks round. It's really dramatic. It's got these dark lines there. Really nice. Really nice. We do it on the top of his head. We've got to do it on his chin or his cheek, I guess, would would be what that is. Maybe. I'm not sure exactly what part of the bird that is. It's maybe more where his throat is. I'm not exactly certain. Okay, you didn't let, you didn't see it, but uh, I let the painting dry for just a minute, and now I'm gonna come back and we're going to try to do the rest of the body and get some nice color on on the rest of him make him stand out really nicely I put a little water on there first of all and a lot of times with cellulose paper if you pre-wet it uh, your colors will go on a little bit more smoothly 
and they'll definitely flow a bit better. It's just, just sharpening up some of the feathers that are on here. Some darker lines, a little lighter lines. The darker the line between them, the bigger the gap, the deeper the gap in the feathers. If it's a little lighter, then the feathers maybe have a little bit of a softer edge to them. But something needs to be there nonetheless. And I'm just going to futz around with it for a little bit. Come on, Michael, let's get on with everything else. Oh, that was a little wet there. It got a little, a little blown out. Try to fix that. There we go. Still got my rigger brush, I believe. Yep. Put on some details down here. Now, I should say this rigger does hold quite a bit of water, so I can do a small bit of painting with it if I really need to, or I could have switched to a size 2 of the a silver black velvet brushes had I wanted to. But I've got this brush in my hand and it's going to do just as well as anything, so I'll just keep it there. I'm going to do some work on his foot here. His foot was a little a little light, a little <laughs> washed out. We just hadn't gotten back to it. And he's kind of floating on something. We're going to need to put uh, something underneath that foot here very quickly. I don't always paint the foot when it's not on something. I, I like painting wood and uh, branches and twigs and sticks and whatnot. But, but in this case, we can paint all of that later. still want to get a bit of color I'm going back to my silver black velvet brushes here a bit of a bit more color on his back there I was back is very light if you look at the reference photo it is very light the question is um, is the blue that's on his back dark enough or is the wing uh, uh, fully dark enough and there you go the question for the wing is or the answer for the question about the wing is no nope, the wing is not nearly dark enough let's darken that up a little bit <clears throat> and I believe this is only layer number two on this bit of his wing so it's not really dark there it is right on there it still looks fantastic and you can definitely see there are layers of feathers there just now and we're going to have to put a little bit of color on the wings, but his belly down here maybe needs a little bit of color. Let's, let's tighten up this red a little bit. If you haven't noticed, I really enjoy painting birds. This painting is sped up a little bit. It took me about an hour and 20 minutes, an hour and a half something around there to paint uh, this little guy in real time. I'm giving it to you in about a little over 30 minutes. For those of you who've been able to stick with me this long, I hope you've enjoyed it. I really do enjoy painting birds. I've got more birds uh, that I have taken video of that I'm going to be bringing to you shortly and I hope you enjoy those also while I've got a moment I should say some of my paintings can be found for sale on Etsy there's a link in the write-up to that uh, this one that you are currently watching has already been sold so I apologize that you will not have the opportunity uh, to 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 get this one but I'll have several others up there, and hopefully, uh, if you like one of them, you'll be able to pick that up. 
And if you like these bird paintings that I do or this bird painting that I've done, leave a comment down below and let me know. Let me know if there is another bird that you would like to see me paint. Typically I stick with um, birds that I find in the area where I live, but from time to time I do enjoy uh, painting other birds. I mean, all birds are fun to paint. So I'll give that a shot. If you want to ask me questions a little bit more directly, then you can leave in the comments down below here. You can always join my Discord channel and ask me there. I'm pretty wide open. I have no subject is off limits. I'll answer any questions about my artwork. If you post a bit of your own artwork and ask a question about that, I'll probably give you my two cents on how it looks. And um, starting to get a nice little community over there. I'm trying to paint the first Wednesday of every month on YouTube. It's tough. I've got a lot of family obligations. I've got more family obligation now than I had when I originally uh, started broadcasting on YouTube. <clears throat> so depending upon what my kids schedule looks like, I can't, I can't do any more than that um, with any regularity. I do from time to time broadcast on Twitch more of a drop-in thing as I have time if I'm able to and you can find me there my channel is down below you can you can uh, follow me over there and you'll get notified uh, whenever I'm able to broadcast on that service Uh, I think this guy's coming together quite nicely. I love the dimensionality of the feathers on his wing, on his back, on his tail. I think they look fantastic. Still a little wet in here. I've got to be real careful about how I do this now. Those feathers on his back are still quite wet. I can probably put in just the indication that there are some feathers but not too much more than that look I even I just made a new feather right there look at that I didn't have that drawn in or anything I just it just looked like it needed to have an extra feather there so let's let's put that on there quick as that a little bit of negative painting and and you've got the whole thing And that little area I'm painting right there is a huge white spot. It's just, it's too white. It's more white than the rest of the bird. So I'm just gonna hit that with a little something and dull that down just a little bit. That's all I've done there. As I'm painting this right now, I'm just, I'm looking at it and I'm trying to think, is there anything else I could do? Is there anything that needs to be done? what would make if i put something else on the body of this bird would it make it look better that's the only question i need to ask a couple more feathers on his back here simple as that a couple of lines not much else here i'm just I just I put a little dark on the edge and, and blend it out. And that's going to help to make him look a little bit more 3D. I'm almost, almost to the part where uh, somebody's going to need to nudge me and tell me to stop. <laughs> that's, that's how I do watercolors. I, 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 <laughs> I like to make something that's really nice and then... Uh, keep going. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> so I'm almost to the point where I'm just futzing with it to futz with it, and I need to I need to step back and stop. I need to make the little twig or 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 branch that this guy's on, and not 
mess around in here anymore. It's a hard, it's a hard thing to do is to realize that you don't need to do any more on a painting. Okay, here we go. There's not much to this. It's a brown gray thing. It's uh, a little bit of yellow ochre. It's a little bit of Payne's gray. It's a little bit of uh, burnt umber. Maybe if I really wanted to, I could throw in just a little bit. Oh, that's sepia. A little bit of sepia here for some shadow. I could use blue on a shadow if I wanted to. Shadows aren't necessarily blue. So you can use brown, you can use gray. There are lots of different colors you can use for shadows. Shadows are a darkening of whatever the object is on. In this case, the stick that he's on is, uh, is really is uh, fairly brown. So I'm gonna leave it in the brown family. All right, it's dried up. And I think it needed to be just a little more brown, give it a little bit more life. The yellow ochre maybe was a little too light. I don't need much. That's a, just adding a little texture there is basically what I'm doing. And now that his back is totally dried, a few lines here and there. I keep I keep looking at it going stop Michael stop 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 don't do anymore <laughs> it's fine the way it is all right darkening up the shadow in here again I'm trying to work trying very hard to work in uh, very light layers I would rather paint two or three maybe even four layers to get the desired result rather than one thick heavy layer. It's just a better way to do it. There you go, and there's the shadow. Here's his shadow on that little stick that he's sitting on. I am gonna cheat on his eye. That is a Sino gel pen in white. I don't use a lot of white watercolor. I don't well I don't use a lot of white gel pen either, but in this case, I think it works. Maybe there's a little highlight on his foot there, something like that. If you don't need a lot, you just need a little tiny mark here and there. It's a fantastic thing to do. And that's all there is to it. I'm going to add a little bit more uh, dimension to this little stick that he's standing on. If you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe to my channel. I'm trying to get one video out a week here on YouTube. And I'm trying to have one live session the first Wednesday of every month. So please try to attend those. I'll, I will do my best to let everybody know what I'm going to be painting. Put it in the community notes. You can always check my website or you can check uh, Twitter, Instagram. Links to all of those things down below. Uh, and I'll let you know. I'm trying to do a monthly newsletter. Uh, so if you go to my website and sign up for that, you'll get information on that. And a monthly challenge through my Discord. So that's down, down below. Link to that also. Other than that, thank you so much for joining me here in the studio. I had a great time talking to you about this cute little guy. There's the signature. Thanks so much. We'll see you next time here in the studio. Bye-bye.